Today I want to talk about the importance of bed leveling. Now when I say bed leveling, I'm talking about proper distance from nozzle to bed across the entire surface of the print. I cannot stress how crucial it is for printing. There is an endless number of questions in the community every day asking why this print failed or asking what could cause this mess. The majority of them is because of bed leveling. Even when you think bed leveling is fine and you already checked, it's probably still bed leveling that is the issue. Sometimes we don't want to admit that bed leveling is the cause and too many times I see the finger pointed to extruding, belts, retractions, etc. as the first suspect. Now, those things could very well be part of the problem, but as the old adage states, when you hear hoof beats, think of horses, not zebras. I want to show you a small demonstration which helps illustrates why bed leveling is so difficult to master and why so many of us tinker with our printer to achieve perfection in bed leveling. My goal is not to show the obvious outcomes, but rather the small nuances with the distance between nozzle and bed. Here I'm printing just a simple one layer hexagon shaped print. I have applied glue stick on the bed to ensure adhesion is not the problem. My offset here is currently set at negative 0.4 millimeters. From here, everything looks good. It looks like a decent print and everything looks like it's going well so far with no signs of it uh, causing any issues. Now let's see the result after it's done. At a glance, this looks good. Some might even claim that it looks like first layer porn. However, I want to point out that the ends where the infill lines meets the perimeter, it looks a bit smush. Looking across the infill itself, there are some imperfections on the surface as though it's not entirely smooth. So here it is off the bed and already I can feel that it wants to crumble in my hands. The imperfections that I saw earlier are more prominent now. This print is probably still usable if you're not printing something important, but as I hold it up to the light, you can see a lot of imperfections. This would be terrible for high detailed projects such as lithographs, and it's just not a good print. I wanted to show you a closer look at the endpoints from the infill lines near the perimeter. These ends look smushed in and are usual indicators of the nozzle being too close to the bed. They should look more seamless as the nozzle transitions back and forth on the ends, Another thing you'll see at these ends are holes. They may be hard to see, but if I hold it against my fingers, you can see them better. You can also get them a little when the nozzle is too far, but these holes are very prominent, so this is an indicator that it's too close. One last thing to point out about this particular print is how easy it is for me to split apart the lines with one hand and not a lot of force. It's just not acceptable for a quality print. You might think this is expected for a single layer using line infills, but let's hold on to that thought for a moment. Now I'm making my second print, and I just want to move the nozzle away from my bed a tiny bit. I'm going to set my Z offset to negative 0.35, which moves it above the bed by 0.05 millimeters. That's right, 0.05 millimeters. This may seem like an insignificant amount, and so far the printing, the printing doesn't seem too different from all angles, but let's look at the final results. Looking at the completed product on the bed, the surface looks more uniform across the whole print, and the ends near the perimeters look more seamless. With the closer inspections, we can see that the print looks much better compared to the last one in terms of the consistency in the lines and how the edges, edges show no visible holes and there's a smooth finish everywhere you look. This is a much higher quality print. Now I'm going to hold this up to the light. We can instantly see how clean it looks when it's translucent and this would have made an excellent print for lithographing. There's little to no imperfections aside from the stains on the backside of the print. These stains are residues from the glue I used earlier and can be cleaned off. But overall, this is what you were looking for if you're trying to do high detailed work. Apart from the details, look at the strength of this print. 
I am unable to rip the print with one hand, and even with two hands, I would need to exert strength with the purpose of destroying this in order to tear it. It really feels like a solid piece of plastic. That second print was sexy, but for the third print, I'm bringing it up again another 0.05 millimeters. This brings me a full 0.1 millimeters from where I started. Here's the third print. The surface actually looks a bit better than the last print. It looks more smooth, like there's no pressure from the nozzle at all. This looks good. However, there are some imperfections that are quite noticeable, like these gaps here and near the edges. The edges are also not as seamless as I would like. Holding it up to the light, it looks decent. There are some areas near the bottom that are a little off and not quite as clean all the way through. And this looks like it could be good for lithographing, but there's a problem. In terms of strength, it feels better than the first print, but it's brittle in parts which are easy to break. Again, this is probably fine for most prints as you'll have more than one layer. The point is that imperfections in the foundation can carry problems through the rest of the print, and depending on the application can result in failure. I continue my prints into the fourth iteration, and again I raise it by another 0.05 millimeters, so we are at 0.15 millimeters from where we started. With this height, there's almost no nozzle pressing down on the print. You can see that the lines are not pressed together and look like steps on a staircase, even though this is supposed to be a single layer. You can see it more prominently at the perimeter where the lines are going around the hexagon. There are also a lot of tiny gaps that you can see in the print. As I hold this, I can clearly see there are imperfections everywhere. And another thing is that it comes apart really easily. I'm not using much effort and already the individual lines are separating like noodles. This print is probably unusable and there's a high chance that it could come apart during the printing process. Especially if you're printing something tall, this is something that would be a concern. I hope this has illustrated how a height difference of just 0.1 millimeters could drastically affect the print quality and why so much emphasis is put on getting the first layer just right. Having the settings at the Goldilocks zone will transform the properties of your prints and will determine the, the success of your project. Of course, there are other issues unrelated to bed leveling, and I might tackle those in another video. But I wanted to express the importance of triple checking your bed leveling before chasing the rabbit and troubleshooting your prints. Thanks again for watching my videos, and let me know if you would like more videos on troubleshooting prints like this, and I can try making a series on it. Until next time, stay dorky.